Hey, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Pastor Susie. We are at work. It is time to get to work, right, Pastor Susie? There she is, ladies and gentlemen. The one, the only, the radio star, the teacher, the preacher, the counselor, the purveyor of all things agape love. Pastor Susie Warner of the Churchtown Church of God. She's like, yes, Daddy, what? It's just, I'm just being me. I'm just being how I was created to be. Right? There she is, wondering why I'm talking to her like this, holding this silly thing right in front of her face. Pastor Susie keeps me sane, my brothers and my sisters. Pastor Susie keeps me sane. There is no doubt about that. Good morning, Larry. Good morning, Dale. We are, quite honestly, quite literally, turning on the lights. Hello, poinsettia tree. Poinsettia tree. Whichever you say, I don't care. I say poinsettia. Unless I'm feeling very pinky in the air. If my pinky's in the air, then I say poinsettia. Pastor Susie is barking at something in the sanctuary. I'm, I need to come over here and get this here because I have recorded 10 episodes of Still Good News Today. Right there. And I need to take them to the radio station. So I don't want to forget them. Yesterday was recording day. Recorded 15 episodes over at the radio station. What are you barking at, hon? That's her. Right? She's my lead counselor. Anybody is upset, I lead with Pastor Susie. Pastor Brian comes in second. It's the way it should be. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Sharon. Hello, Jesus. Hey, good morning. Fancy finding you here. That's a, that's a joke, folks. Because he's with us. Father God, thank you so much for this day, for this gathering of your saints, Lord. Bless our conversation as we turn to you for your wisdom and your guidance on a daily, moment-by-moment -moment basis, I pray each one of us picks up our cross this day and follows you. In Jesus' name, amen. That's it right there. That's the altar. Mm-hmm. How about it? And there's the sanctuary. How about it? Not a lot of music that I am practicing this week, but I want to show you because I've been buying myself Christmas presents. So this, I, did I show you this Christmas hoodie? It's my Christmas hoodie. It is Harley, right? Very nice Christmas hoodie, white Harley Davidson on the back. Now, look, and it was on the clearance rack, super sale. Like, so my wife is super proud of me. Look at this baby, brand new Harley cap. Normally around 50 bucks. I know you're paying for what's on the back there. 20 bucks. 40 bucks. <laughs> My happy pappy. I'm loading up. Plus, been working extra hard. So, you know, you know when you get an allowance, you get a little bit of an allowance. Are you a person that can save that allowance for something bigger? Let me ask you that for the first question of the day. Are you a person that can save your allowance for something bigger? Good morning, Round Knob. I love that. I love that. Still searching. You, your video and audio is so good. Man, we're still working on that here at Churchtown. I have a wonderful person that is running lead on the technology stuff. We're going to figure it out. It's going to be fantastic. Maybe we will mount our Mevo on the wall as well. I love that. Or are you a person that, okay, you got a little bit? It's burning a hole, baby. It's time to spend it. I've tried. So if I want something big and I am dedicated for it, I can do the other, right? If there's something, and usually that's either bike related or gun related, let's be honest. But I'll, I'll set that aside. But So I can do the other. But man, I'm like... I got my allowance. It's time to go shopping. 
So there we are, my brothers and my sisters. Let me go back and, you, oh, Barbara, see, I, I would have guessed that. What I should have done is taken a look at everybody watching and then tried to guess if you are a saver or a spender. If you are a saver patient, yes, no problem with me at all. I set it aside. I will, well, Barbara doesn't scratch her beard, but I will figure out, you know, what I want to get. Or you're like, I got 20 bucks. Let's go. That's me. I'm like, I got 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Because here's the deal. Can we be honest? Because I am honest with you guys. <clears throat> I lost my last one. I wear a lot of hats, especially in the wintertime. I have to wear them in the summertime because of the sun. I wear them in the wintertime because it's cold. So I wear hats. I wear hats and I leave them lay all over the place. The last Harley hat I had, I had it for a long time. It was showing wear and tear. I left it in a restaurant, I think, somewhere. Let me wave to everybody. Good morning. Happy Thursday. Um, reading an article this morning. And I want to talk a little bit about, see what you guys think. Unless you have a scripture, unless you have a thought, unless you have a question. But uh, mouse, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. She's a good girl. She's a good girl. We had a church board meeting last night. She sits in on all the church board meetings. I mean, she's, you know, quite the versatile associate pastor, well-versed in many, many things. Good morning, good morning, good morning, your saver. It's all you savers, ugh, I'm a maker. I know you're, I saw the sweater you made. Is that what you're referring to? <coughs> and the stuff that you made for, <coughs> oh my. <coughs> Where'd that come from? Susie. There is an impulse inside of me that I do fairly well at controlling fairly well. Good. See, I like to hear that about you. Uh, hi, Michelle. Fantastic stuff this morning. Frame the conversation. We have talked about, we talk about being ministers of the gospels all the time, right? Right? Ministers of the gospel, the gospel message. We talk about that too, don't we? One message, four accounts. It's the gospel according to Matthew, the gospel according to Mark, Luke, John. Right? So, this gospel message we're talking about all the time here, and we're refining and defining all of the time. Because knowing what we're talking about is what? Fill in the blank important. So we talk about that all the time. We look, right? And we, we, we look at the, the gospel and we say, well, does it match up with what we're preaching? And one of the things for me is, and I always, I always qualify this because it sounds crazy. Am I just preaching salvation? I mean, we are to preach salvation. Do not get that twisted. But am I just preaching salvation? Am I teaching and preaching what we call believism? Just believe you're saved. You'll go to heaven when you die. Your ticket is punched. And, th and that's that. Or are we exploring the gospel message, which if we look inside all four accounts, Jesus doesn't walk around saying, believe in me as the son of God and the son of man. And when you die, you will go to heaven. He doesn't, I mean, that, that's part of the message. Again, don't. But he starts out by saying, repent, believe. Why? Why? For the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is breaking in on the earth right now. Very true. So when we look at the gospel message that we're talking about, are we talking about what is happening spiritually 
in this dark world, there is an inbreaking of light. There is an inbreaking of God's love. I'm not going to just say love. God's love. There is an inbreaking of what we call the kingdom of God on earth. And part of that, right? The extended part of that is living with Jesus in this kingdom now and for eternity. So when we start with the premise of, you know, you, we are called to be family members in the family of God now, and we live in the kingdom of God as it is breaking in and establishing on this earth now. And of course, there are, we're, we're feeding the poor and we're taking care of the, the people and we're sharing this message with the Gentile world, right? The pagan world, because that's what God tells us to do. He so loved the world. He wants each and every individual to know. When we start with that premise, then, you know, premise, again, language, we get wrapped up you know, premise sounds like I'm just trying to make some sort of rational argument. But when we start with what Jesus preached, then maybe we don't have to kick ourselves in the pants so much to get out there and do stuff. Because we understand from the beginning that that's the way it works. Like we're not just putting our head down and raising our hand and saying, yes, I want to go to heaven. I do too. I'm not just saying I believe in Jesus. The demons say that they believe in Jesus. They, they're quoted in scripture. <laughs> There's more to it. When we begin with the idea that there is more to it, you see, you know, then when we say here it, here it is, loving the, with God's love through us by the power of his Holy Spirit, our community, the individual. You're welcome, Michelle. Um, the individuals, the, all of that, then we don't have to create a separate evangelism, committee on evangelism, because the church understands that that is why we are. We are the manifestation, the ma hi Debbie, man major manifestation of the kingdom of God on earth. This is who we are. This is what we do. And, and you see what I'm saying? You understand? I've been thinking a lot about that. It's really influenced my preaching as I have, and really everything that has been happening over the past several months has been premised on that simple understanding of what Jesus preached. When I talk about being closely tethered to the word of God, I mean, I wanted to go back and read the gospels and highlight what did Jesus preach? Not just, not what he taught, like all of the different parables the kingdom of God is like. But what did he proclaim? What was the very fundamental pillars of his teaching? Preaching, preaching. And it is repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. It is believe in me as the son of God and the son of man. And he whoever believes in me shall not perish but have eternal life. It's those two things. Those are the two pillars. And the one that comes first is the idea, the preaching that the kingdom of God is opening on earth right now. Something different is happening there is something different. And we're a part of it, right? So you contrast that with a lot of, 
You know, we talk about some of the extremes here. We talk about like all of the the uh, the traveling, um, all of the traveling self help preachers. You know, they talk about this moralistic theism, right? This therapeutic theism, like five ways that you can improve your, and you know, it it can be helpful to people, but it is so loosely tethered to the Word of God like the Steve Furtick's of the world and so forth, they're going around and it's, I want to believe it's not damaging, but it's not, it's not Christian proclamation. It's maybe Christian-based self-help. Like you go to Google and you say, what does scripture say about depression? And then you have the five principles, right? And you make something, you, but you're so loosely tethered. Your message is not beginning with repent, <laughs> for the kingdom of God is at hand. So we have that extreme over there. And then we, we talk about the other extreme, sort of the hyper-spiritualism, the new apostolic reformation type stuff with glory clouds and angel feathers. Angels don't have feathers, by the way. And all this different stuff that's happening and rolling on the floor and laughing and screaming and all of that stuff. And you have these two sort of things. And as always... When we go back to the book, and that's what I wanted to do. I didn't feel like I was at one of the extremes. I just wanted to check myself. And I found that I was a little flip-flopped in the cornerstone of my preaching being salvation. And I know that that sounds a little odd. Like I said, I, I don't want anybody to not hear that I'm, you know, like I'm, I'm preaching salvation. But... When I examined Jesus' preaching, he led with the kingdom of God is available to you. And this is how believe in Jesus Christ as the Savior, as your Savior, and you will enter the kingdom of God. You will be saved. You will be drawn to him as a son or a daughter and you will enter the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God, how do I get in? Jesus into the kingdom of God. Does that make sense? And so I just wanted to be very faithful to the scriptures and to the preaching, the proclamations. It's okay, are you... I'm wondering about your questions, Michelle. I'm glad that you're with us. Uh, we talk about all kinds of different things on here, everything from social stuff. At nearly every day, we go back to the book and, and refer to what we believe as followers of Jesus Christ. Um, there's a lot. And you can find them all on YouTube. Are you all subscribed to the Churchtown Church of God YouTube channel? You should be. Subscribe and hit that notification bell. You'll get all of the videos from Churchtown. Oh, brothers, $20. $20 for a new Harley hat, right? This was like 30 bucks for a new Harley zip. These things are like 80 bucks. I'm a good shopper, man. I use my allowance well. This thing is warm. Mm. Mm -mm. I got a meeting this morning at 10 a.m. about my daughter's wedding. I've got some serious business coming up the next three weeks. A wedding on the 14th. A wedding on the 21st. Christmas Eve, the 24th. Right? All of the Sundays in between. The Christmas events. All of the other stuff. It's going to be crazy. It's the most... Wonderful time of the year. Sing with me. Oh, there we go. Martyr. I went yesterday. I went yesterday. I don't, I don't. So anyway, I went yesterday when we were talking about
I, uh, I don't know and I don't understand. But anyway, um, we were talking, I, like I said, we, I went over to the radio station. We did three episodes of True Inheritance. And we wandered around Christmas, is what we called it. Wandering around Christmas. We tossed out different ideas that are taught about Christmas and how they are, how biblical are they. We talked about the importance of the Christmas story. We talked about the importance of the conception of Jesus Christ. We talked about the importance of the virgin birth and all of those different things. And not just the importance because we talk about the baby being born, but we talk about the theological importance and the fulfillment of the prophecies and how if, because lots of folks will tell you, well, whether it was a virgin birth or whether that is a story doesn't really matter. It's not a deal breaker. It kind of is a deal breaker. It kind of is a deal breaker on a couple of different levels. One, very practically speaking, we would have built an entire cult around this woman's lies or this community's lies. So that's kind of a big thing. That if it is true, then the prophecies are fulfilled. Jesus is the Christ. He is the Son of God and the Son of Man. And it, he came into creation the way it was foretold. Oh, okay. And that is important. So we can't just discount it and say, hey, look, if you don't believe in that, it's okay. I mean, practically speaking, we're talking about building a gigantic cult around this woman and her lies. Can't do that. That can't be. Theologically speaking, we're talking about the fulfillment of prophecy and the ushering in of the new covenant. The fulfillment of the old, the ushering in of the new. Theologically, we're talking about the only individual capable of atoning for our sins through the shedding of his blood. It is super important that we not just talk about the birth, right? We talk about the conception. The, when we talk about God becoming incarnate, we're talking about his human life beginning at conception. There was never not a time that Jesus wasn't human. I've brought this up before because it has repercussions into how Christians view the sanctity of human life. If we as Christians say, well, human life begins at birth, human life begins at the heartbeat, human life begins after the first trimester, human life begins after the fetus is viable outside of the womb, whatever definition we use other than at conception is wrong. It's wrong unless you as a Christian believe there was a time when Jesus was not fully human. That there was this mishy, mushy, weird time when he was fully God, but not human. Scripture doesn't teach that. We understand that Jesus the Christ was human from the time that Mary conceived. Theologically, we, if we're, we break our consistency, if we say, well, that's not true. There was this time when in Mary's womb, Jesus wasn't human. He was a zygote, he was a fetus, he was a something, he was an embryo, he was a whatever. He was not viable outside of the womb, right? Mary could have killed him at that uh, point, that could have killed him at that point in time and it would have made no difference. That's ridiculous. So as Christians, do we ever even think about that? The Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will conceive and give birth. We go back to the conception when we celebrate Christmas. We, I'm telling you, we don't just celebrate the birth. We celebrate the conception, the incarnation. And Jesus, God, was incarnate from the time of conception. He was incarnate. He was flesh. From the time those cells started to divide. There was never not a time when Jesus wasn't Jesus. We can't argue that as Christians. Right? 
So we see that God's Holy Spirit, you talk about an energy transfer in time, talking about God's Holy Spirit conceiving in the womb of Mary. So there, there, there's super important things about Christmas that we can talk about and latch on and, and really try to bring to light other than, and I know the language is crazy, right? Other, other than that birth on that Christmas morning. There's the idea of everything that goes around it. There is the idea of the anticipation of the coming of the Christ and the idea of the anticipation of the second coming of Christ. And believe me, he's coming incarnate again. He's not coming to be whipped and beaten and murdered. He's coming in glory, in final judgment. Again, I'm reading through Luke, and I mean, if you, can't, if you read through Luke, that middle section of Luke, before the Passion, from like chapter 5, chapter 19, and you do not have a healthy fear of the Lord and His second coming, then you're not reading Luke correctly in any translation. Jesus over and over and over again talks about be prepared, be prepared, be prepared. He says over and over and over again, this is what the kingdom of God looks like now and the fulfillment of the kingdom of God is coming. Are you ready? Over and over and over and over again. He beats the same drum. So that's what we talk about. That's what we talk about. And it's important that we understand that Jesus Christ lived, Jesus Christ died, and Jesus Christ was raised from the dead by the power of God. It is important that we understand how and why he, I say was created, but you know what I'm saying, because I know that he did it that he did this, let's put it that way. It's important that we know how and why he did this. It's important to know what we are celebrating at Christmas time. Super important. It's important to understand that it is by the power of God alone, the indwelling of God's Holy Spirit, that we live in the kingdom of God today and that we are that light in the world. Super important. So there we go. There we go. Be ready, baby. Is there oil in your lamp? Is there oil in your lamp? That's what we're talking about. I want to take a look here. Hold on, kids. Hold on, kids. Hold on, kids. I know, I know, I wasn't prepared. I know. Oh well, I'm gonna let it go, I guess. For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. We grow weary in our present bodies and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. For we will put on heavenly bodies, we will not be spirits without bodies. While we live in these earthly bodies, we groan and sigh, but it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothe us. 
Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. Sorry. So we are always, you're a tough audience today. So we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord. For we live by believing and not by seeing. Yes, we are fully confident. And we would rather be away from these earthly bodies, for then we will be at home with the Lord. So whether we are here in this body or away from this body, our goal is to please him. Before, because we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. We understand our fearful responsibility to the Lord. Right? 2 Corinthians 5. And we understand the book of Corinthians was written over an extended period of time. And you can really, as you read 2 Corinthians, experience Paul's moods. You can experience his state of mind from the beginning to the end. From the beginning and the sort of downcast view that he has of despair. He talks about being nearly brought to death. He talks about... Um, how, it, how futile the effort seems sometimes in preaching and teaching and doing what he's doing and even being a follower of Christ. By the end of the book, he's rejoicing again. I mean, you can just taste the humanity that is moving through Paul's writings in this. And he's saying that the kingdom of God is open now and we are members of the kingdom of God and we have a fearful responsibility to the Lord it is not easy believism. It is not something to be taken for granted. It is not something to be taken lightly. It is not something that we say, okay, yes. Well, in case there is a God, uh, yes, I believe. Now I'll set that on the shelf. We are called, we're taught to live a life worthy of our calling as followers of Christ, as inheritors of the kingdom of God as points of light in a dark world. We have a fearful responsibility to the Lord. Let that be the word. Let those be the words that you take away today. We understand our fearful responsibility to the Lord. We work hard to persuade others. God knows we are sincere, and I hope that you know this too. Love it, man. And so that's just, that's just been where I've been focused. We've got to think about getting out of here for today, but I appreciate you guys so much. Good morning, Steve. I thought I saw somebody else. So, gotcha. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that we're all experiencing the word together. I'm glad that we are all drawn to not just share in the world, but to grow and to become the children, the people, the men, the women that God sees. That we are defined by his definition of what it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman, what it means to be a child of God, what it means to be a human, and not the world's definition. And as much as we look to the Lord and we say, and we have this healthy fear of the Lord and we understand to be ready as we commit ourselves to him every day, I am so, so thankful that I am a child of God and not subject to the whims and the judgments of the world. And my message for today, as it is always, whether you are whatever facet of a follower of Christ you are, vocationally or otherwise, how closely tethered to the word of God are you? How closely tethered to the fundamental teachings of Jesus Christ are you? I needed to check myself. And I think it's healthy. 
So, God bless you guys. Oh. Oh, okay, yeah. Put that somehow, some way, if you can get that in the comments. It says, I'm a pastor, don't look so surprised, or something like that, right? It's really cool. It's really cool, right? I like that. I like that. Let's pray. I just feel the need. Father God, I pray that every heart that is with us today is open to the power of your Holy Spirit, to open eyes, to take the scales away, to open eyes, Lord, to open hearts. Father God, I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit that your kingdom of God grows today through your children, Lord. I pray that your word goes out today, Lord, and penetrates hearts and souls in this dark world. I pray that your message of the kingdom of God and salvation through your son, Jesus Christ, emanates throughout your church and throughout your creation this day and every day. Father God, in Jesus' name, thank you so much. In Jesus' name, go live a life worthy of your calling. 